Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance, here with my first cup of coffee. Delicious. Today is, say it with me, Friday. Woohoo! Um, June 23rd. I have an event tonight, if you're anywhere near Santa Fe at Purple Fern Bookstore with the inimitable Melinda Snodgrass. Should be fun. Um, I know at least one neighbor will be there, right? <laughs> um, I've had a good week. I've had a, I've actually had a great week. And I'm um, yeah, super pleased with how my program is working to improve word count. I have had three 3,000 word days in a row now. Um, if I get even like 500 words today, only 500 words today, I will have beaten last week. Um, if I get another 3,000 word day today, then I will be, um, it'll be my best week so far this year. So, and it's, it's flowing well, it's flowing so nicely. So I don't know if that's my program or if it's this book, um, Onira. Um, this book is just pouring out. That's just such, such a joy when that happens. I mean, you can't count on it and I'm not sure that it's meaningful. Um, Someone in my Discord in Jeffy's closet, um, Lizette Marshall, I think, said that that means that it's going to be a really good book. And I i don't know if I believe that. Um, because even the books that are like the real tooth pullers, some of those are really good. Um, and it's very difficult for me to say that one of my books is better than another's. Um, than another. Uh, other authors seem to be able to do this, but I don't know. I, I like all of my books. <laughs> I suppose there's a few that I would go back and change, but then readers really like them. So I don't know. I don't know what to say. Uh, but I'm just trying to enjoy the ride. Enjoy the flow of this one. Um, it's it's definitely just so nice to do this and to be able to focus on the book and to have it coming along. And it's something I've been thinking about. It's made me realize that um, I think my life is really different <laughs> than a lot of people's lives. Uh, and it's sort of been turning up to me in different ways. Uh, just because I have a couple of new friends that like I've been messaging with and I will send them a message. So like on WhatsApp, you can see that somebody has read the message and I have this one friend that it'll take her like two days to reply. And I know that it's not that she doesn't want to, because when she does, you know, she'll reply in thoughtful ways and we'll talk on the phone and she'll say, Oh, I just got so busy. And I know, I know she's really busy. I know she has a lot of demands on her time. And I think a lot of people's lives are much noisier than mine. I'm at a fortunate place in my life where, you know, the kids are grown and the grandkids are not close by. And so we have, um, you know, it's just me and David and we lead this pretty quiet life. But I've also been realizing how much of that I've created, created, um, I want to have a really quiet life. I want there to be a lot of space for the words to fill in, for the story to come in. And I think that that's something that we both developed for a long time um, when we did martial arts training, Taoist training, uh, spending long time in meditation and just enjoying quiet. So, so yes, I've noticed that my life is much less busy than other people's. Now I have one friend who, who lives up in Taos 
and is a, an even more of a hermit than I am. And she'll uh, comment on how often I'm traveling. And it's been really nice that I haven't traveled anywhere this month. Um, but so she's probably got an even more quiet life than we do. Uh, she lives with just her husband and their animals and really don't see many people in sort of inside their high walled compound. Uh, and she's a very productive writer. So I do think that there's a connection to that. Um, a friend asked me the other day about a mutual friend and whether I thought that this friend could be a successful writer. They're still in early stages. And I said, well, they have the talent. Um, but you all know if you've been listening to this podcast for any length of time, that talent is a very small piece of the puzzle. Uh, it's great to have talent. Enjoy it. If you've got it, cherish it, nurture it. Um, so this person has the talent. They have the, the background. They've done a lot of the reading in their life, which I think is very important to understand story and to understand the canon. And they have um, the, the thick skin to take critique, willingness to take critique. Um, but, and my big but is that I think, I think that they're a bit of a dilettante in that if they want to write, especially to write a novel, you have to devote long periods of concentrated time to writing it. And this person, um, you know, has a busy life, has young kids, which makes it harder, not impossible, but does make it harder, but also um, does a lot of socializing, you know, a lot of partying and a lot of traveling, going places for, you know, like a couple of weeks at a time with big groups of people and this sort of thing, um, which to me actually sounds like hell. <laughs> I think it's funny because um, when I first found out that, you know, like just talking to this friend about like, their plans. I'm like, you're going to be there for two weeks, two weeks with people there nonstop all the time. How do you get anything done? And of course the answer is, is they really don't. Um, they have written some short stories and I think that you're probably okay, better writing short stories if you're going to have that crowded of a life. But I think it's really hard to write novels if you have a really crowded, noisy life. And you have to carve out space for, um, for the creative flow. You have to find silence or you're not going to be able to hear the words of the story. Um, I mean, that, that, that's what I think. I, you know, I'm sure other people could, you could find examples, but yeah, I think that unless this person sort of changes up how they're approaching things, I don't know. I don't know if they'll be able to make the strides that they want to make. You know, the, the will, and when we talk about will, is it, is it there? The desire can be there, but then there's got to be something more. There's got to be the willingness to make sacrifices. And some of that is like not, not having the party life. Uh, you know, being ready to, you know, have what amounts to a fairly boring life <laughs> um, with a lot of quiet. And, and now I feel like I'm just repeating myself. But I had a, a friend pop up yesterday, uh, and I won't say who it is just in case, but uh, a very well-established author. And in fact, this person was published way before I was, um, had a traditional book publishing contract, um, a great agent. She, uh, was very generous and wonderful to me when I was a, a brand newbie author, when I was still querying, when I was nobody. I, I hate that. Are we some, are we not somebody, even if we're still querying? You know what I mean, though. Um, 
yeah, she, she was very supportive, very helpful. And as, as happens in this business, um, various things happened in her life. Um, the, you know, the traditional publisher decided not to continue her book deal. She ended up parting ways with her agent because her agent was doing, um, unfortunate stuff, unethical stuff around self-publishing. Um, yeah, it was just, and, and also the agent. So this is interesting, um, and, and kind of instructive because, you know, we talk about having a bad agent is worse than having no agent at all. Uh, and if you're self-publishing, you probably don't need an agent unless you're like trying to get into, uh, foreign rights deals and that sort of thing, which you don't have to have, but it's helpful. Um, but in this case, uh, okay. So this gal and I were at, um, a conference together an RWA conference. And I said, uh, did you tell your editor that you're going to, to be here? Cause her editor was going to be at the conference and she said, no, she doesn't want anything to do with me because they decide not to continue on with that series. And I said, you don't know that you should, you should make contact with her at least say hello. So, so she like emailed her editor a couple of days before her former editor, you know, and just said, hi, let I let you know, I'll be at RWA. And her editor was like, what, why didn't you tell me? And ended up taking my friend out to lunch. And she said, how come you haven't sent me anything else? And my friend said, well, my agent said that you didn't want to see anything else from me. And the editor was, you know, kind of did the head tilt. And she said, no, I, I said, I, we couldn't keep going with that series, but I did want to see your next thing. And the agent had never said so. Um, and that was when my friend was still with that agent. And that was part of the reason she decided to part ways. Uh, did she forget? Maybe. Did she think it wasn't important? Did she think, oh, well, she'd bring it up next time my friend had, uh, something to sell. It's hard to say, but you really want an agent who's going to leap on that kind of thing and facilitate communication, not get in the way of it. So, um, anyway, so this friend and I have a long history. Uh, we've known each other for very long time first met through um an rwa special interest chapter for those of you wondering how do you meet writing friends and she and i have been critique partners and are occasionally still every once in a while she asks me to read something for her every once in a while i send her something um especially if i need fresh eyes uh, and we sort of know each other's particular expertise so anyway anyway she pops up yesterday and saying, um, feeling existential angst. And so one of the things that's happened is that life has happened for her. Uh, she has done a little bit of self publishing. Um, she sold a self published series to a trad publisher cause she just didn't have time to manage it. Uh, but she has not been getting the writing done. She's living in a politically inhospitable place and taking care of aging parents. And so, yeah, she messaged me yesterday and sent me a picture of cute cats by way of offering. And then said that she was experiencing existential angst because she's, you know, all that stuff she tried to build that writing career she tried to build is feels like it's nothing now. And and that's, that's just a hard place to be. It's, you know, the, the past laurels, right. And, and I could totally understand. And, and I feel like it's important to talk about this because we, we tend to think, especially as newbie authors, that once we get the agent and once we get the book deal and once we get, um, the accolades, uh, her, her books have won amazing distinction. She's won awards, uh, big awards, um, that we think, okay, then we're set that, you know, and, and this goes back to this thing I was talking about not long ago. Well, I don't know if it was on here. It could have been at a, 
it might have been an in-person event but this whole idea you know like where people come up to you and say you've made it congratulations you've made it well there there is no made it um there this is a business this in in publishing the trajectory is not this straight line that shoots up um it is the up and down line it is the roller coaster it is the you can become yesterday's news really fast um and the one thing that you can control is the writing right but that's very difficult that's the part that's um a challenge right especially if there's a lot of life happening and my friend has a day job to help support the parents and all of that kind of thing and you know so she's and for a while she was a full-time writer and you know she was able to devote that time to writing and it's like you know it it goes around and comes around and a lot of writers um even you know like um Andy Weir who wrote The Martian you know he talks about that that he uh, I think he got laid off from his day job. He had already been writing The Martian. He'd been doing that, self-publishing it on his blog and building that platform and, and doing very well with it. And then he, uh, I think, got laid off from his day job and had a good enough severance package to take a year to write. And he thought, well, I'll finish this book and uh, finish writing. And he ended up having to go back to work. Of course, then he hit the stratosphere with the book deal. Um, and now he probably never has to have a day job again, but a lot of writers, you know, quit the day job and end up having to go back. And it's just how it works. Um, that full-time salary and benefits, it's a seductive thing. It's how the man gets you back into the grind. So, so anyway, um, yeah, so she was just feeling it and I just, and I feel it for her. And, you know, she said, I'm just not getting the writing done. And I said, well, can I help? Can, can I help you think of ways to build a fence around the writing to create that time? And she said, you know what? No emotional labor without uh, recompense. She said, I'm just going to join your Patreon and Discord. And I was delighted to have her there. And I said, well, I hate to be a financial burden on you. And she's like, well, unless it's hundreds of dollars a month, I think it'll be fine. So, and which it's not, <laughs> it's like five or $10 a month. So anyway, um, it's great to have her there. And it's funny because as soon as she popped in there, people are like, wait, you're the author of this book. Oh my God. And so um, I'm hoping that that is, if you are listening to this, um, hope it's okay that I talk about this and I hope that that um, connects back with the fact that you do have this community of people who love your work and, um, and and it's easy to forget that it's easy to get out there in the world of day jobs and caring for aging parents and forget that that there is a reason that that you write and um, and it's it's a higher calling it I mean that I that maybe sounds goofy, but it is. It's something that we do out of love of the work. So, um, yeah, so it's an, it's a good thing to keep in mind. Um, it takes a lot of willpower, not only to write those novels to stick with those novels and write through the boring parts of the non flowing parts, uh, but also willpower to withstand the inevitable downslides. Um, it's just, it's the way of things and, um, uh, boy, boy, you've got to want it, but if you do want it and if you're willing to apply yourself, if you want it more than, than the parties and the, um, you know, vacations to Europe and all of this kind of thing. You know, it's nothing wrong with all of that stuff. It's just really hard to write a novel at the same time. And you, you have to choose, you have to, um, you have to sacrifice some things if that's what you want to have. So, um, on that note, I am going to go inside and get to work. 
um, very excited to think that I might get another 3000 today. Who knows? I'm, I tend to peter off on Fridays, but um, maybe, maybe I'll make it today and uh, we'll see. I'll report and I will talk to you all on Monday. You all take care. Bye-bye.